Core 4, practice paper 1, question number 4. Now this is question number 4 and that's all that appears on the question paper. We're told to integrate this between these limits but we're actually told you do it by substitution and this is the substitution you use. Now I have worked out this question and I realise that there's something that you should know. So let's look at that before we even start the question. So for question number four, you should know that if you get y equals a constant, a number to the power of x, and you differentiate that, then dy dx equals exactly that again multiplied by the natural logarithm of that constant, that value. This you're meant to know. It isn't on the formula sheet. Well, there's loads of stuff not on the formula sheet you're meant to know, but I'm pointing out this particular piece of information you're meant to know. Let's just look at proving this, which possibly you could be asked in an examination. All these facts that you're meant to know, some of them you're meant to be able to prove, and this could be one of them. So let's have a look at proving this. First off, let's find the natural logarithm of both sides. If we find the natural logarithm of both sides, that's that. Now, using the third property of logarithms, that power, or index if you want to call it a power or an index, can come down the front. Now, for no real reason, I'm going to write this around the other way. Well, there is actually a reason. We normally write a number in front of the x. Let's suppose we had 5x. We'd write 5x like that. We wouldn't write it like that. We usually write the number in front. And a natural logarithm is, in fact, a number, albeit a decimal number. So I'm writing it around that way. Now, there's another reason why I did that. I'll show you now. If I now differentiate both sides with respect to x, if you differentiate a natural logarithm, you get 1 over... Differentiating with respect to x will give you dy dx there. Coming back to my 5x I was talking about over here, if you differentiate 5x, the x disappears and you're left with just the 5. So the same argument here. If you differentiate this, then the x disappears and you're left with a natural logarithm. I hope you can see now why I wrote that around the other way. It just helps explain what's going on. Now let's multiply both sides by y. Let's multiply both sides by y. And now let's go back to our original piece of information and substitute it back in. So, substituting y back in, we get this. So, as I say, if you're told this, then you're meant to know that when you differentiate that, this is what you get. Piece of information... If you didn't know it, you're meant to know it. And we need that to do question four. So that's what I say. You should know this. Now let's do question four. If you visit www.masstutor.biz, then you'll give you the opportunity to not only see question four, but the rest of the questions on this exam paper. Because with the set of DVDs that you can buy, you will get a copy of this exam paper which you can then work through, there's question 4 there, work through the whole exam paper and then watch the DVD that goes with the exam paper to see all of the solutions, all the working out and all the marking. So if you're interested in seeing question 4 and any other questions from this particular exam paper visit www.mathtutor.biz for the opportunity of getting your own copy of the DVD and the maths paper.